Good morning to my YouTube and Facebook viewers, to my Macedonia Church family. We say good morning to you on this beautiful Wednesday morning that the Lord has made. We certainly hope and pray that you and your families are doing well, that you are safe, that you are protecting yourselves from this uh, deadly uh, pandemic, this deadly virus known as COVID-19. Uh, this coronavirus is, is truly running uh, rampant throughout uh, our nation, throughout the world. We just want to make sure that you all are making sure that you are being safe and taking good care of yourselves uh, during this during this time. I certainly want you to know that we love and appreciate each and every one of you for your prayers, uh, for your love, and for your thoughtfulness. Uh, truly, it is a blessing to share, Sister Sharon and myself, and we just want you to know that we, we love you and we appreciate each and every one of you for your kindness, uh, for your prayers, for your continued love. Uh, I ask that you all will continue to pray for me uh, as we are not in our best health at this moment, but yet God is good. And truly, we know that he is able and uh, he's capable of, of taking care of his children. And, and truly, I believe that he's going to continue to take care of me. But I just ask that you continue to keep me lifted in prayer. Uh, the reason why I say that, because I know Mother Luvella McClellan Big shout out to Mother McClellan this morning. I know she's watching and I know she's looking dead at me and she can kind of tell when I'm not at my best. And so I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there today so she'll know, but I'm okay. Uh, but big shouts out to Mother McClellan, um, to Mother Douglas, uh, and to the rest of the Macedonia Church family. Um, just a big shout out to each and every one of you. Uh, your pastor's doing fine. We're going to be okay. Today we will go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. That's where we'll go today. Uh, and today we're going to talk about um, free and cheerful giving. Uh, today we're going to talk about, about the giving aspect of the church. And so uh, many of you may tune out because uh, when it comes to finances and giving, some turn the other way but uh, we want to talk about uh, the benefits of giving from a personal perspective and as as a whole as well the benefits of, of, of free and cheerful giving uh, that's what we want to talk about today one of the things that uh, I don't think any church should do is to mandate uh, giving uh, when I say that I'm referring to the fact that there are some that make demands on giving, uh, what you should give, how much you should give. Uh, I don't think that that should ever be done. Uh, I think our giving should be done freely and according to our hearts and not, not mandated uh, by any leadership. So uh, giving is, is free. According to one's heart and so that's what we want we want to talk about uh, today if you would uh, allow us to go to God in prayer uh, as we search the scriptures again on this beautiful beautiful Wednesday morning our God and our Father we thank you for this day thank you for this opportunity that we have once again to share in the Word of God we pray by your Holy Spirit that you would speak to our hearts that you would open the scriptures to us that we may have a better understanding of your will and your way give us a receptive spirit and a listening ear spiritually to hear what you have to say and lord we pray that after we have heard lord we pray that we will become doers of what you have said that it becomes a part of our lifestyle and that people will see you inside of us in our walk in our talk in our everyday living. Bless us now as we search the scriptures on this beautiful day you've given us and we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. For his sake we do pray, amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter nine. Those of you who have your Bibles, I'll be reading from uh, the original King James version of the Bible. Um, and so we ask that you would go with us now as we, as we search the scriptures. Uh, let's look at first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's look at the first five verses. The Apostle Paul writes these words. 
He says, for as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal have provoked very many. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest happily, if they of Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. So Paul writes um, to the church at Corinth to advise the Corinthians to contribute to the offering um, with words of confidence and positive motivation. Um, he writes, verse 1, he says, it's, it's really it's superfluous um, for me to write. He says, really, there's no need because uh, they have been faithful in their giving and they had set forth uh, a positive and a good example uh, for other churches to follow but he says he writes it uh, that that boast that uh, his bragging and boasting about them wouldn't be in vain but um, that it would be written on paper that it would be used as a record uh, not of his own personal opinion but that there be concrete evidence uh, that they were doing what needed to be done when it came to, to their giving. Um, he says um, in verse 2, uh, as he writes this, um, he writes because what they had done uh, in Macedonia and Achaia uh, and even in Corinth, uh, what they had done uh, had become an example to others and had provoked others or caused others to want to give. And truly that should be the desire of uh, every member of the body of Christ is to do their part, uh, be an example. Paul talked about being an example in chapter 8 uh, in our walk and in our way. Uh, he talks now about being an example in our giving because Paul says and he believed and I believe as well that when we set forth the example someone watches uh, someone uh, has a desire to do the same thing and so they get on board and begin uh, to be obedient and uh, consistent in their giving and not only are do they become consistent and obedient, but then they become an example as well uh, to others. And so it just goes on and, and on. Um, and that's what we should all want to do. We should all want to be an example uh, for others to follow. And certainly these churches had been an example for others, others to follow as well. We should, we should do the same thing. We should not do it to brag of ourselves. We should not do it with the intention to receive hierarchy in the church because we give more than someone else. You give as God has prospered in your heart. And therefore, it's not about how much you give. It's about the heart in which you give. And so everybody's not going to give the same. Some's going to give more, some will give less. But it's not about the more or less. It's about the intent. We hope and we pray 
uh, that you're giving uh, with the right heart and with the right intent. And so Paul writes this to give them a little pat on the back, a little attaboy, uh, to let them know uh, that it was, it was necessary, it was good, but, it was, but they were also setting forth an example to others. And certainly we should do the same as well. Let's look at verses 5 or verses 6 through 11. Paul says, but, I, but this I say, uh, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. There's that heart again. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I know you've heard that before. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. And so now um, uh, Paul kind of gives the benefits of believers being generous in their giving. He's motivated, and he has tried to motivate uh, his readers further by pointing to the benefits that come for those who give uh, in this generous manner. Um, he says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Hmm. So it says, basically, you get back what you give. Hmm. You give a little. Paul says, don't expect great things or of that above which you have already sown. If you sow 10 kernels of corn, you spread them out. You shouldn't expect any more than 10 stalks of corn. That which you sown, that you shall also so reap. It's all about, and Paul really is saying, really not dealing with numbers, but he's really dealing with the intent or the heart by which you give. You remember the woman, Jesus sitting by watching as those who entered into the temple gave an all and there were many that gave plentifully because they had plenty but they gave with the intent for people to see them give and to know that they were giving in large portions they were giving to be seen. Jesus knew their heart. And so as he began to watch them along with the disciples, he began to teach his disciples that that particular individual who gave to be seen gave with the wrong intent, or gave with the wrong heart. He gave to be seen of men. But then he also pointed out this widow woman who comes and she only gives one mite or one penny. And he says to his disciples, 
that she had just given more than the one who gave plentifully. Because Jesus knew her heart, Jesus knew what she had, and thus Jesus knew and spoke to his disciples and said, this woman had just given all that she had. She didn't have anything else to give. All she had was that one might. But she didn't hold that one might back. But she gave it because she knew in her heart it was the right thing to do. She wanted to be obedient. And she gave. And she gave all that she had. Jesus says this woman had given more than the one who had given even greater. Because she gave all that she had. She gave from her heart. And it's with the heart that, that God looks at each and every one of us. You know, the things that we do, the way that we are, God looks at our heart, not so much at the materialistic or the tangible things that we're able to do. And so let us know that we must always give with the right intent because the Bible teaches us and the text even tells us that if our heart is right, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. He says there's some things that we shouldn't do. We should not give grudgingly, being mad about it, that we got to give it. You know, if you're mad about the fact that you've got to give it, you know, there's no there's no reward in that. There's no blessing for that. Uh, you, you really, honestly, and truthfully, if you're mad about the fact that you've got to give it, God really doesn't want it. Um, it's best that you keep it because there's no reward for giving um, with an angry or grudging spirit or grudging heart. Um, he says you shouldn't give out of necessity in the fact that you know, you're giving because you have the desire for reciprocation. In other words, if I give and I need from the church, I've given my money, so therefore if I need anything from the church, uh, I know I ought to be able to give it. It shouldn't. That shouldn't be the intent. Uh, if you give, you shouldn't give with the idea that you can get it back. <laughs> uh, that that's a that's a wrong perception. Uh, and I've had many uh, who have given, who were faithful givers, and when they were in need, um, if they were denied for some odd reason, because uh, every time one comes to the church with the desire to receive help, um, a lot of times it's not a need. Uh, a lot of times it's to the point that they, they wasted and did not widely use what they had. And many you know, won't be honest to tell you that, but in most cases um, there, there have been some who just wasted what they had. When I say waste, um, I'm talking about going to the casino and taking your light bill money uh, to gamble it off with an intent of gaining more where you can pay your light bill and then have a little extra. That's wasteful. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't do that. That's nonsense. Uh, we should never take the monies that we have set aside for responsibilities and squander them in wasteful living. That's a no-no. We shouldn't go take our phone bill money and buy a pair of red bottom shoes because they won't save. Uh, when you already have several pair of shoes and 
thus you know that you need your phone uh, for communication with your children to know where your children are and things of that nature the things that we have um, deemed to be important and a necessity in our daily living we should never take the monies which we've accumulated and squander it and not take care of of things that that we know we will need and we should never expect the church to meet that need when we've squandered uh, what we've had so we should never give thinking that if I need anything I ought, to, I ought to be able to get it back because I give it's not a way to give uh, we give freely uh, that God may give back to us freely and the old saying is true that you know you can't beat God's giving uh, no matter how you try the more you give more he'll give unto you and so we have to have this attitude that giving is right and that we freely give uh, we don't give angrily but we give with a good heart and thankful and, and happy that we're able to give that's the attitude that we ought to have because the text says that the Lord loves someone who's happy about giving to the church hmm. are you happy when you give or are you mad because you got to give think about that hope and pray you're not because if you think about it even when we look at the tithe and the tithing uh tithing is only uh, from from biblical teaching and from the old testament times tithing was only a, a tenth of of your income um, so if you made a hundred dollars the lord says you know if you were to give me 10 he said the rest the, the 90 is is for your own ability to use um, what's 10 you know wouldn't you rather have the 90 dollars and god gets the 10 what if it was reversed and god said you know i want 90 percent and you live off 10 um so you know the math doesn't doesn't even add up when it comes to what God um, required uh, of the tither. Uh, Ten percent. That's it. You know, would you rather have two hundred and seventy dollars uh, and then give the Lord thirty? So out of that three hundred, you were able to keep two hundred and seventy, and the Lord only says, you know, give me, give me thirty of that three hundred. And then the Lord says, if you do that, I'll open up windows of heaven for you. I'll bless it that you won't even have room enough to receive. You know, I'll do more for you. Uh, if you just have the heart to be consistent in, in your giving. Yeah, yeah. So giving is right. In fact, giving is, is an obligation to every believer that we should, we should give. Uh, and we should give in the right spirit. Paul is two things that Paul really brings out in this particular chapter number one is people are watching you and you should be an example to others and you are an example to others because someone's watching you and someone will pick up on your consistency uh, and your ability to give and they'll want to give as well because they're going to see how you're being blessed they're going to see how your health is is continually being uh, being blessed uh, how your life is continually being blessed and they'll want to be blessed as well and they'll know that, you know, your blessings come from your obedience and your consistency in your giving unto God. And so they'll want to do the same thing. And so the uh, first part, he talks about being an example because others uh, will watch you and want to do the same thing. Then he says, make sure you're giving in the right spirit. Make sure your heart is in the right place when you give. Uh, that's two things that he points out uh, early on in this chapter. Let's look at verses 12 to 15. Verse 12, he says, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God, while by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. 
for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all, all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Paul developed the theme of thanksgiving further by stating that generous contributions would result in widespread praise unto God. And so the end result is that our giving is a form of praise unto God. We're an example. We give with the right heart. And then it becomes a praise unto our God. So giving is also, we always we talk about this a lot in our services and in our uh, uh, petition for you to give. We talk about the fact that giving is a part of worship. Uh, I can remember coming up where when it came to offering time, uh, it seemed to be a time of intermission time where people could talk to one another and move around and some would go out some would walk around and go to other pews and talk to other people just all out of order and disarray I've, I've seen it but but really this is just as important during worship than any other time of worship in fact it is a form of worship giving is another form of of worship just as our songs and our prayers and our proclamation is a praise unto our God so is our giving a praise unto our God and so you know this is a you know this is just as a, uh, this is just as serious a time in worship as any other time so there should be not be any moving uh, there should not be uh, a lot of uh, conversation uh, during that time. Uh, this should be a time um, where uh, purses are being opened and wallets are being opened. In fact, I say this, and certainly it's going to be uh, required and suggested of the membership when we return. You know what you're going to give before you leave home. And I've seen many, uh, when it came time to give, uh, they go to you know, pulling out their wallets, opening up their purses, finding what they're going to give, uh, finding an envelope, putting it in, signing the envelope. When in reality, you know what you're going to give before you leave home. And if you don't know, you should take the time to find out what it is you're going to give. And you should be already ready to give when giving time uh, is upon us. Uh, when, In other words, when it's time to give, uh, you should already have what you're gonna give uh, and be ready to give it uh, whenever that time approaches. But I've seen many times, you know, people had to wait, ushers had to wait people to finish their signing their envelope or, or you know they would tell them to go ahead on and then they'd have to come back and get it uh, you know, just wasting a lot of time when in reality again you know what you're going to give uh, before you leave home so why not uh, make ready uh, before you leave home uh, and you know, speaking on that that is one of the things that you know we're going to ask of the membership as you know, we prepare to reopen. And when we do reopen, uh, that is that you have your offering ready when you enter into the building uh, because there won't be a time in, in the worship. Uh, you will begin to worship as you enter in and be asked to give as you enter in because uh, we want to teach and begin a habit of already having your offering ready before you even pull up on the campus. And I'll tell you this, this will help you as well if you do that. Uh, 
you know, once you get paid, you know, take out what you know you're going to pay, get it ready, get it out of the way. That way you won't be tempted to use or to spend what you know you're going to give unto God. And that's a good way to stay consistent. That's a good way to make sure that you give you know, what you have a desire to give uh, and you're not tempted not to give because you've spent it uh, you know, before Sunday gets here. Um, the wise thing to do would be to take it out at the beginning, put it away, and have it ready to give when you have that opportunity to give. Paul wanted to take a moment today to teach us uh, the importance of giving, the necessity of giving, because uh, when we give, we support the needs of the church. Uh, and there are some needs of the church. There is a business side of the church where we have to pay bills. The lights don't just come on automatically without us making sure that we pay our light bill. Uh, that's a necessity. Uh, we have staff uh, that we've committed to uh, that must be paid. So we have salaries that have to be paid. And so there are some necessities within the church. Uh, and every church is different. Um, but you know, speaking from Man Macedonia's perspective, you know, giving is important because it allows us to continue to do what we do. And then there's some needs of the membership uh, in that there may be some members who may be in trouble, uh, who may need financial assistance. Uh, let me say to each of you, don't, don't just run and expect you know, the church to just openly give, you know, there, there's going to be some criteria. You're going to be questioned. And one thing I found about people is they don't like to be questioned uh, about their personal business, but if you personally want something from the church, you should be personally willing uh, to give them the information they need to determine whether it is a want or a need. Uh, that, is, that is the responsibility of those who are in charge of finance. That's one of the responsibilities they have. Could you imagine if the floodgates just came open and just said, listen, if you need anything, come to us. Could you imagine how many people would actually come and ask of the church? We would be run over, and there's no possible way we could financially take care of everybody. It just, the math doesn't work that way. And so, you know, we have to be very frugal. Uh, we have to be very wise uh, in, in our ability to be able to, to help. But that is a, an area of the church uh, that we, we must also operate in, and that is helping others. So this aspect of giving, Paul teaches us that it is the right thing to do but we want to do it in the right way. And that is, Paul, that is Paul's um, real teaching, his, his, his real statement is that, you know, make sure we're doing it the right way. Uh, some are giving and, and sowing seed, and it hadn't come up because they sowed with the wrong heart. Make sure your heart is in the right place. Know that you're being an example. And know that it is a form of praise and worship to our God. My time is up. I do hope and pray something was said or done that would further your walk with Christ. But truly it is about our walk with Him. Listen, know that it is right to give. Uh, you have a giving spirit within you. God gave you that. Because God is a giver. Um, he gave this earth, uh, its form, everything that's in it, God gave it. He gave you life. And so God is a giving spirit. And because we are created in his likeness and in his image, uh, we also have been given that giving spirit. Allow that giving spirit to manifest itself 
and to be a part of your daily life. That you'll not only be a giver to the church, but you'll be a giver to others. That the Lord may continue to allow his grace to abound upon you. And that you may continually be blessed because of your heart and your desire to give. We love you. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out uh, to study the scriptures with us. Listen, be safe out there. Be careful. Most importantly, we pray above all that you be blessed. Wash your hands. Keep a mask on your face. Protect yourself when you're around others. And we pray that you have a long and healthy life. And that the Lord will continue to bless you and your families. Again, we love you. We bless God for you. And we pray that heaven will continually smile on you. Be blessed.